Grand Rises Royals, this is Queen coming to you this morning. Today is March the 6th, 2024. I'm here to continue my story. Excuse my absence. I had some issues with my car. So I didn't want to operate in the same energy that I was used to operating in from when I was in a space of pain. So I just wanted to make sure that I was <clears throat> harvesting the correct energy as I navigated through the situation of getting my car back on the road. So that's why I've been absent. So please accept my apology. Um, I just wanted to really be present and handle things in a different manner as I move forward. So let's get started with this storytelling. What happened to me? Um, long story short, I got pregnant and I ended up being diagnosed with something called syphysis pubis dysfunction and come to find out that's like premature labor well that's not like premature labor it is premature labor um and from there back in february 2015 when i had my third child um my body basically stayed in that space so from 2015 well okay I just don't know how to start this story exactly. Okay, let's just start it here. Back in 2014, June, I had relocated down to Atlanta, Georgia from Wilmington, Delaware. Um, before I had relocated down to Atlanta, I was pregnant at the time. In the midst of me actually getting ready to physically drive down to Atlanta to relocate, I started experiencing... Um, bleeding i went to the er and they couldn't tell me because i was six weeks and five days they couldn't tell me if i had miscarried or not so they said that um i had to come back in two weeks to find out if i had miscarried or was i just bleeding so fast forward um i literally was supposed to be getting on the road i no longer had a home um i had bought everything to a close so I end up staying at a girlfriend's house for a week. And after about a week, I started feeling better. And when I felt better, I was like, okay, it's time to go down to Atlanta. It's time for me to get rooted down there and find a doctor and figure out what's going on with this pregnancy. But I do feel better to be able to get on the road and drive down there. So I ended up in Atlanta. After so many weeks of searching and looking for a doctor that's taking new patients, um i found the doctor and i went to his office and when i went in i took the paperwork that i had from wilmington delaware er hospital i took that into my first appointment and you know my thing was listen at the time when i had got this ultrasound done i was six weeks and five days now that i'm sitting here in your office i should be about 13 weeks the doctor examined me he then said well, when he did the ultrasound, I myself looked at the ultrasound and I'm like, that's a small baby for it to be 13 weeks. That's a really small baby. So after he did the exam, he said, well, Miss Callis, you are five weeks and six days. So I said, no, that's not accurate. When I was in Delaware, I was six weeks and five days. You're now saying that I'm five weeks in six days i was like you got it backwards and he said no you're literally five weeks and six days um he said the doctor then said the most that i can understand to explain is that you had a miscarriage but the minute you ovulated again you got pregnant so my whole thing was so basically i was pregnant in delaware that bleeding that I had was me losing the baby. However, when I relocated down to Atlanta and I now live with the child's father um, and we were sexual, I lost the baby, but then immediately I got pregnant again. So now I'm sitting in his office with a five week and six day pregnancy. This is around about July and August, 2014. Fast forward, October 2014, I went into the doctor's office 
And I said, listen, I have this pain that I'm all too familiar with because I've had this pain with my other pregnancies. This pain is going to ruin my life. Like it's it's so chronic. I don't know what to, what else to say to you. So the doctor said, well, explain to me how your previous pregnancies was. So I explained to him how difficult the pain was and it was difficult to do anything with my lower half. Um even to go to the bathroom so that even as a female to go to the bathroom and even if once you urinate and you go to wipe yourself you know you open up your legs that became difficult so the doctor ended up hearing me out and he said okay i think i know what's wrong with you so i'm like okay what because my other pregnancies they were never able to tell me anything on why i was always in this pain so he came in with this paperwork. He left out the room. He came back in with this paperwork. And he said, listen, I think you have something called syphysis pubis dysfunction. So me never hearing about that. And here it is the first time. He gave me all this paperwork on it. He said, go home and read up about it. And maybe you'll understand more about what you're dealing with. I went home and I go on Google and I search this word syphysis pubis dysfunction. And it wasn't much at the time, it wasn't much on the internet, but I came across this one personal story where this woman had had two births. She she birthed two boys and she was diagnosed with syphysis pubis dysfunction as well during her pregnancies. And from there, she was now in the wheelchair. So as I'm reading her story and she's, she's sharing how she can no longer be up and actively playing with her children she has to be sitting down or in her wheelchair she also started explaining how she had um slipped disc all because of these pregnancies she had other situations that came up all because of this pre these pregnancies and this diagnosis so as i'm reading her story i'm i'm <laughs> i'm laying in the bed and i am bawling because out of everybody that i was expressing every time i was pregnant this pain to no one at no one seemed as though they understood so here it is i'm now reading someone else's story but i'm feeling like i'm reading all about myself because the challenges of daily living were so hard to come by every single day getting up to go to the restroom was hard um shifting in the bed rotating in the bed was extremely difficult so um fast forward <clears throat> we're in we're in october 2014 so fast forward by october 2013 i mean 2014 i'm sorry so fast forward here we are in october 2014 he gave me the diagnosis i read about this woman's story and i'm like no way no way am i gonna let this consume me to the point of i'm now in a wheelchair just because i choose to birth life forward by november i was on full bed rest November 2014, here it is, I'm on full bed rest. I no longer was able to stay in to work. I was no longer able to just get up and cook for my children. Everyday movements became a extreme struggle. So not only did I just up and relocate, um, I'm trying to build my clientele in Atlanta. Um, my children are now going to new schools. So it was a lot of changes that was going on. From three months of pregnancy all the way till I actually gave birth, each and every single month as she grew inside of me, the movements, daily movements became so taxing on me physically that it wore on me mentally and emotionally. The, what does, what does symphysis pubis dysfunction feel like when you're pregnant. Well, the doctor's definition of symphysis pubis dysfunction is it is separation of the pelvic bones. So any doctor I've ever spoken with always gave me that exact definition. It is separation of the pelvic bones. Um, so now here it is. I'm in this bed. I'm in this bed for months. I mean, it was so crazy with the daily living that I ended up in a hospital because I was dehydrated due to not drinking, due to being home alone and trying to get up to go to the bathroom 
was non-existent. So because it was such a struggle with me trying to move my own physical body, I would refrain from eating and I would refrain from drinking anything until my children would come home. So at the time, I had a 15-year-old daughter and I had a seven-year-old son. And now I'm pregnant with my third child. So I ended up in the hospital due to dehydration. Um, I'm back home. And the physical challenges of living every day was so taxing that it was a point in life where I took a CNA course, right? So I also practiced CNA um, and I worked in nursing homes. I worked in the hospitals. And it was a it was a good course to take because somewhere, somehow, somebody's going to always be sick. So it's good to know those skills to know how to care for your loved one. So fast forward, here we are. I'm in this space. So getting up to go to my doctor's appointments at the OBGYN were very taxing to the point where my 15-year-old now had to listen to me verbally instruct her how to position me to either rotate me in the bed every two hours or she had to get me dressed in the morning because I could not get myself dressed. Um, my daughter had to literally become a CNA overnight. I would verbally walk her through how to position me to sit me up on the edge of the bed. I then would instruct her how to dress me as I sat on the bed and, and called myself trying to assist her, but I, I probably wasn't assisting her. Um, the rule of thumb throughout all of this that I kept telling my daughter, don't worry about me and my pain. Don't worry about what I say or how I squint. It got to get done. So just reposition me regardless of the pain or the wincing or the, the cries that I do. Um, just, just rotate me or just get me dressed, you know, just we'll get through it. Um, in my head, my whole thing was after I give birth, this will be all over. So she used to bring me on the edge of the bed. She would dress me. Once she would dress me, she would stand me up. You know, um, she would literally put her arms underneath my arms and she would stand me up. And then I would balance myself on her. And then she would assist me with pulling up my pants and things like that. Um, so I lived in this space and it was so challenging to move that when those of you who've been pregnant, you know how you get closer and closer to your due date. The appointments go from monthly to every two weeks to weekly until you had a baby. Moving was so challenging and we and we lived on the bottom level of this apartment complex. Oh my goodness. So I had to go up like three flights of steps just to go to the car. That was the, the trauma behind that alone. Um, it was to the point where, you know how you go in the doctor's office and they go, we need a urine sample? Okay, well... Well, it got to the point where when I went into the office, I said, give me the cups because when I come in here, I want to already have my urine. I'll give y'all my first morning void, uh, which is my first morning urine. I'll give y'all my first morning void and I'll bring that in. However, when I come in and I sign them papers to state that I'm here, please take me in the back and please do what you have to do because me coming in, sitting down, getting up, going to the back, getting on the scale, going to use the bathroom to give you a urine sample and, and uh, all those little intricate details that's normal were not normal in my world. So at the time, anything that made my world and navigating through my world a little bit better is what I was aiming for. I was in so much pain carrying my last child that automatically I knew, you know what? I'm going to tie these tubes. I'm not going to go through this again. This is so chronically painful. I can't even think. So fast forward, I dealt with my pregnancy and all my care down at in Atlanta. After all of this, I gave birth. I gave birth at Northside Hospital in Atlanta, Georgia. Beautiful hospital, by the way. Um, and they were very, very, very helpful in this hospital. In my head, after I had this baby, my second pregnancy, it took me about 18 months before 
that pain left, right? So in my head, okay, this is my third pregnancy. If my second pregnancy took about 18 months of recovery before I felt better, then this is my third pregnancy. I'll give myself about two years before I should start feeling better. This is my own gate of measurement that I went by based on my other pregnancies that I had, which I also had the same exact situation. They just didn't know what it was in Delaware to diagnose me. So here we are in Nurseside Hospital. I have the baby and... I end up going home three weeks later. I end up abruptly waking up one day and just moved. No plan, no vision. I just knew that the environment that I was in was no longer mentally safe. Um, it was no longer emotionally safe. And physically, I stayed in that space because I couldn't move. I couldn't you know, uproot me and my children. I couldn't pack up. I couldn't, you know, move about to save my life, basically. So here it is, three weeks in. My baby's three weeks old. I decide to relocate back to Delaware. Woke up one day and said, we're moving. Matter of fact, I woke up, and not only did I know we were moving that day, but my children didn't even know because I myself just decided today's the day I'm going to move. And it wasn't my own consciousness and reference to making this decision it was more so i heard the spirit speak to me and the spirit told me today is the day you are to move and when i thought about it i said today is the day i am to move and i heard this three times today is the day you are to move so i said okay today is the day i'm to move I checked my bank account. My bank account was sitting exactly at zero. It wasn't in the negative, but it also wasn't in the positive. So I'm sitting there and there's no money. But the spirit just told me today is the day that I'm to move. So guess what I got to do? Move. Even though I had no money. So I made a phone call. I made one phone call. I made one phone call home to Delaware to my sister. She answered the phone. And I said, listen, I need to move. I need to move today. Make it happen. And she said, are you sure? And I said, I'm positive. I need to move and I need to move today. Make it happen. And she said, okay. And I said, I have to do some other stuff around here. I got to get in contact with the social service because I didn't um, get her um, social security card yet. So I was like, I got in touch with social service, but I also got to get a copy of her birth certificate because I haven't received that either. She said, okay. So here it is three weeks. Every time, <laughs> okay, so it's just a lot, it's so much. Okay, so here it is three weeks. My baby's three weeks old. My third child's three weeks old. I'm still in this God awful pain. I didn't gave birth. This pain is so unbearable that I have to move about. But in my head, I have this drive and it's, I'm going to be okay. We just got to go. I don't know why, but for some reason, today is the day we got to go. So in within, within five hours, I was able to hire a moving company. I was able to rent a U-Haul with the car dolly on the back to pull my car Um I withdrew both of my children out of school and I packed up and only grabbed the things that I needed to be able to be successful to start back over as I went to Delaware, when I got back in Delaware. Um, so here we are, five hours in, all of this happens. Um, my, my daughter, again, she was 15. She was going to Riverwood at the time and I called her up and I said, listen, do what you need to do. I'm on my way. We need to move. I'll be there in 20 minutes. She says, we're moving weird somewhere else in Georgia. We're moving back to Delaware. Like, what do you mean we're moving? And I said, no time to talk. Say your goodbyes. We got to go. So I left the apartment. I went and picked her up. When I got there, her and her girlfriends are crying a river in this, in this guidance counselor's office. Crying a river. And I walk in and I'm like, what is going on? Why are y'all crying? So the school guidance counselor and whoever else was in there, you know, they're all looking at me as though, 
man what's wrong is everything okay and i'm like listen give me the most important paperwork you need me to sign because she will not be coming back after right now after this moment she won't be back so they were like well we usually don't do it like this and i said listen give me the most important paper you need me to sign and i will sign it if not send the information to this address and i'll deal with it from there but we gotta go so I signed her out of school and we left. Then I went to go get my son. I forgot what school he was in, the name of it. Um, I went to go get my son and I withdrew him from school. And when I got, we got back to the apartment, the movers was there. They was like, okay, you know, what are, what are we taking? What are we loading up? So I was like this, 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 and then this. Um, some of the neighbors end up seeing that we were moving. Some of the neighbors assisted us with moving some stuff. And from there, we hit the road. Once we were packed up, we hit the road, we was going. We get back to Delaware. Okay, so driving back home, I'm driving a U-Haul truck that was a two-bedroom U-Haul truck with my car being pulled on the back on a car dolly. Every time I swiped my card, whether it was for gas, whether it was to rent the U-Haul, whatever I needed that day, every time I swiped my card, it went through mind you that day i started off with a zero balance so now when i crossed the state line and i came back into delaware because me me my 15 year old my seven year old well at the time he was eight he was getting ready to turn eight and then my three week old we're all driving it took us about i think 16 hours to get back home and that was due to we were on the baby schedule i was a full-time nursing mom I was only able to drive two hours at a time because the baby would wake up and the baby wanted to nurse and had to change the diaper. And so every two hours I was pulling off the road and I was taking care of the baby or I was making sure that, you know, my other two children ate or used the bathroom or yada, yada, yada. So when I crossed into Delaware State Line, I crossed into Del Delaware State Line exactly with $3 in my pocket. Again, my bank account sat at zero, but I had $3 in my pocket. What I didn't know was traveling back home and now that I'm driving this U-Haul with a car on the back of it, I had to pay double the toll. So every time I went to go through toll, if the toll was $4, I now have to pay $8. So I get in the Delaware State Line, I cross over with $3 to my name, literally. I, have, I went down to Georgia with two children almost 10 months ago, well, 10 months ago, and I come back across state line with three children, only $3 to my name, and no place to live, no no nothing, no shop to go to, no place to live, no nothing. But I had reached out to my family, and I was like, listen, I'm on my way in. Um, I asked my uncle to meet me. No, I asked my uncle where can I go to park this truck with my car in the back of it until I figure it out once I rest. So we handled all that. I ended up getting um, what you call that thing, a storage unit, and my uncle was at a Wawa to assist me. He was like, "You can park here. A lot of the truckers park here. You know." Da, 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 da. So I ended up back in Delaware. Part two later on. I gotta go into this doctor's office, um, so I have to cut this short. But I'll continue the story asap. Okay. Peace and love. Blessings.